Hello and welcome to the August 2023 Sky Report. My name is Vanessa and I will be your Sky Guide this month. Let's start with the celestial events this month. Mercury will reach its greatest elongation on August 9th, reaching about 27 and a half degrees away from the Sun in our sky. It'll be lower than Mars and at the same brightness as the bright star Regulus in Leo the Lion. Greatest elongation is when an inner planet reaches the farthest point away from the Sun from our perspective here on Earth. After it reaches greatest elongation, it will sink back in towards the Sun to the other side. We observe this back and forth of the inner planets due to our relative position. Inner planets like Mercury appear to dance around the Sun, never straying too far away from their dance partner. The same phenomenon can also be observed with the planet Venus. Next up, on August 24th, the moon will pass in front of the bright star Antares, the heart of the scorpion in the constellation Scorpius. The unilluminated side of the waxing gibbous moon will cover Antares while the sun is still out at about 6.49 p.m. This will not be visible to the naked eye, but binoculars or a small telescope will be able to see Antares as it appears to dip behind the moon. The star will then emerge from behind the moon a few minutes after the sun has set at about 7.39 p.m. The sky will still be pretty bright at this time, so you won't be able to see it with just your eyes, so make sure you keep those binoculars or that small telescope nearby. This is what the sky will look like about 20 minutes after the occultation, once the sky is dark enough to see Antares with just your eyes. The moon and Antares will still be very close to each other, making a pretty impressive sight in the sky. The next event actually happens at the beginning of the month. We start out August with a full moon on the 1st. A full moon this early in the month sets us up for a relatively rare event at the end of the month. Here is our lunar calendar for the month of August. The last quarter is on August 8th. New moon is on August 16th. First quarter is on August 24th. And that rare event that I was talking about, another full moon on the 30th. This is what's known as a blue moon because it's the second full moon within one calendar month. This is a relatively uncommon event that happens, well, once in a blue moon. You may also hear that this blue moon is a super moon because the moon will be near perigee. Perigee is the closest that the moon gets to the Earth in its orbit. The moon will appear at about 0.56 degrees across in the sky and that's 0.07 degrees larger than when the moon is at its farthest in January of next year. Now that size difference is not easily noticeable without taking measurements, so most likely you won't notice a difference between the August full moon and any other full moon. Next up is Perseus. In the late evening of the 12th, starting around 10 p.m., you'll see Perseus rising in the northeast. As the night goes on, it'll rise higher in the sky, but it won't reach its highest point until after the sun rises. This month, we care a little bit more about Perseus than usual because it is the radiant point of the Perseid meteor shower. The Perseid meteor shower will peak on the evening of August 12th and the morning of August 13th. You'll need to leave the light polluted skies of Los Angeles in order to see anywhere close to the predicted 100 meteors per hour. It's a great time to get out of the city anyways because it's just before new moon. The moon will only be about 8% illuminated. That means it will not disturb meteor observations or your view of the Milky Way, which will be visible in the early evening of the 12th. And that brings us to things you can see all month long. It's Milky Way season. The summertime is a great time to see the densest part of our own galaxy. This image was taken early on July 19th from Joshua Tree National Park by one of our telescope demonstrators, Anthony Perkick. If you do go out to a dark sky site, the center of the Milky Way galaxy will be visible right after night falls, around 9 p.m. The faint extended band of our galaxy will cut diagonally right through the meridian in the sky as you look towards the south. This is a great time of year to take your telescope or binoculars and point anywhere in the Milky Way. The band is so dense with globular clusters, open clusters, and nebulae that you're likely to find one just by simply pointing at a random spot and observing. You might recognize some of the constellations that live in the Milky Way's neighborhood. Sagittarius overlaps a part of the densest part of the Milky Way. You may have heard that the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy is called Sagittarius A star. It's named that way because if we could see it in our sky, it would lie within the boundaries of the constellation Sagittarius. So remember, when you're looking up at that teapot in the sky, you're facing our very own supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. 
We also have Scorpius to the west of Sagittarius, showing off its tail of bright stars. High above those two constellations is the unofficial 13th zodiac constellation, Ophiuchus. You can see him just barely stretching in between Sagittarius and Scorpius. And if you look up overhead, flying through the Milky Way are two birds, Aquila the eagle and Cygnus the swan. These two constellations each have one star that is part of the summer triangle, Altair and Deneb. The third star is the bright star in Lyra called Vega. Moving northwest, we have one of the most recognizable constellations in the northern sky, Ursa Major. You might know some of its stars as the Big Dipper. If you extend the line of the three arched handle stars of the Big Dipper, the line arcs to the bright star Arcturus in the constellation of Boötes. All right, now let's move forward to planets. What are they up to this August? Well, we talked a little bit about Mercury reaching its greatest elongation on the 9th, but it will be visible for a few days around that, just after sunset, along with Mars. Keep an eye out for them in the west early in the month, because they'll be dipping below the horizon quickly. Venus will also dip below the horizon. As you can see, by about August 10th, it will no longer be visible after sunset. It's on its way to the other side of the sun, where it'll be visible in the early morning before the sun rises. It'll be there by the end of the month. So that means if you wake up before the sun on August 30th, Venus will be visible in the constellation of Cancer on the eastern horizon. At this time, Venus will be very bright at a magnitude negative four, despite being only 10% illuminated. This is what Venus looks like at 11% illumination. This is on July 24th through one of our C11 telescopes here at Griffith Observatory. This is about what Venus will look like with a telescope on August 30th. At the beginning of the month, Saturn will rise at about 9.15 p.m., but by the end of the month, it'll rise at about 7.15 p.m. For the whole month, it'll be high in the sky around midnight. Even though Saturn will be out the entire month, there is one special day for Saturn. It'll reach opposition on the 27th. This means that Saturn is opposite of the sun in our sky. So as the sun sets, Saturn will rise. During opposition and the time leading up to opposition, the rings of Saturn appear to brighten. Here you'll see an image of Saturn on July 28th, 2023. Pretty soon we'll start to see the brightening of the rings. Next up is Jupiter. Jupiter will follow Saturn. So that means it'll be low in the east around midnight and it'll be high in the sky just before sunrise. Here's an image of Jupiter taken on July 26th, 2023. You can see the red spot just turning into view. If you're up late watching planets, you'll also see winter constellations rising in the east. Gemini, Orion, Auriga, and Taurus all follow behind Jupiter. Well, that just about wraps it up for August. Thanks for joining me this month, and I'll see you all next time.